Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of EverQuest Old School. And as you can see, we're not actually in the game yet. We're actually in the character creation screen. So we're actually going to go ahead and make a cleric. Uh, I made one a while back and, and lost him for a number of reasons uh, due to uh, inactivity uh, because of things going on. So we're going to make a new one. Uh, and the, the race I prefer is High Elf. They start with more wisdom, base wisdom, than any of the other class or races, I should say. Uh, and they're just really, really good clerics is what I used to play way back when. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and pick that. And we're also going to assign our points. Now, wisdom, as I have mentioned before, is going to be your, your base of your power, your, your uh, mana. Uh, so you want as many points into that as possible. Now, there is a max that you're allowed to put in there, uh, 25 points. So we're going to start with a base wisdom of 130. Now, that's pretty good. Uh, the other five points you can put into whatever you want. Uh, Charisma will help you get better prices, not really used all that much uh, for other things. Uh, some of the spells require that, especially for like enchanters. Uh, strength though is what I would prefer, or stamina. Uh, stamina would be nice because it would increase your health. Strength is nice uh, because as you can see, uh, 60 is what you start with, and that's how much weight you can carry is 60 pounds. That's not a whole lot. If you put on a set of like bronze armor, which is uh, usually what uh, clerics will wear at uh, you know kind of lower levels. Uh, you're gonna be overweight with just the armor on, so that's what we're gonna put our points into. Is is uh, let's see what's next. We gotta create a name, I think, as well. Here we go. So this will be kind of a hard part for some of you guys, getting a name that's not already taken. Uh, so let's see if this is taken as well. And this, we already have one deity that we can go with the mother of all so we're gonna go with that and the only one city that we can start in uh, this is a pretty nice city to start in actually so uh, name has been rejected okay let's try this nope I can go with two L's and an S it's ridiculous and rejected as well how about two S's Holy man, dang. Uh, let's go with something else then. Um, the mirror, which is what we've been going with. There we go, the mirror. Give it a second to load in. Sometimes we'll take a few, uh, depending on if this is your first time loading into the game. It has to load a lot of files for the first time. Uh, also your internet connection in the old days this used to take forever uh, okay so here we go show you what zone we're in and we are in uh, with only two other people one other person actually so this is an alarm window right here and uh, you can set it so that you can remember when to log off uh, if you you know only want to log on for a couple hours before work or before you go to bed and you don't want to stay on too long uh, but you know that you get wrapped up in the game and you forget a lot of things uh, you can click over here hours minutes set it you know for two hours 38 minutes whatever you want uh, hit set timer and in two hours and 38 minutes it will ding and like, hey hey you know this is the alarm you set earlier uh, I always just hit skip because I'm usually not on a time schedule for that though uh, tip of the day you can leave these on if you're new to the game. It will tell you something interesting. You can go through a whole bunch of them and and see what uh, you know tips they have for you. Or you can just click this little message that says "Don't show any tips anymore" and hit close, which is what I prefer. Uh, then you have your your windows. Where do you put them? Well, this is all just up to you where you like to have them. I like to have my windows uh, over here in the top left corner. This is where I'm accustomed to looking. Let's put these over here. So I like to have my window for my individual guy. This is my health right here and my power. Uh, this is the window for who you're selecting, uh, your target. So if I was to turn around and say select this guy, the priest discord, uh, you would see now it changed to your target window. You could also uh, move your songs, which is the way I like to do it. Put it up here in the top right corner. And get it right. You only have to do it really once. So you want to make sure it's it's the way you want it. Let's move these down. And then I can move this over. Give yourself some more room. This also depends on how big of a 
a screen you're playing on. If you're playing on a, a small 17 inch screen, you're not going to have nearly as much room on your monitor as I do on this one that uh, I'm playing on a 70 inch. So it's it's obviously a little bit more room than most people will probably have. Now, you're probably wondering, what do you do now? You just started the game, how do you move around? Well, the arrow keys will move you around. And if you want to see a little bit more of the picture, you can use your scroll wheel to scroll out from your guy. Uh, and then the second mouse button will allow you to do this, turn around, if you hold it down while you move around the mouse. And the first mouse button, if you hold that down, uh, I won't do anything on that one. It used to be able to where you could turn uh, and face your guy so you could see him in the face and see what he looked like there, but unable to do that right now. So if you want to go into your inventory, which is where the game really starts, you hit the I button. Pops up these two windows right here. And of course you have new messages, auto-equip and things of that sort. Now we're not going to go through those. I'm going to say don't show any more of these uh, because I pretty much know everything they're going to show me. Now here's your character. It shows right here uh, your name, Demiro, uh, one cleric, that's your level, level one cleric, and it shows who your god is, Tunar. It also shows HP, that's your hit points uh, for sure. That's how much uh, health you have. You have 23 points of health. Your mana is your power, that's what you use to cast your spells. It's 28. Uh, then your endurance is 20. Uh, endurance, like if you were jump a whole bunch, you'll see that it goes down. Now you can only jump so fast in this game, and you can see it's going back up, but if you were to do a lot of uh, running and jumping and things of that sort, uh, fighting, uh, your endurance will go down and your stats will kind of suffer for it. So you do have to take a break every so often. Uh, your AC. AC is, uh, if you played any other games, you may know it as like mitigation or things of that sort. It's your ability to take hits from the enemy uh, and resist a certain amount of damage. The higher the AC, the less hits uh, or the less damage you'll take from those hits. Then you have uh, ATK, which is short for attack, uh, 10. Now, a cleric is not going to have a high attack, and most of the time, especially at later levels, uh, he'll never use his main weapon uh, as an attack. He'll always be sitting and meditating, so that's not really a big deal for you. Uh, you also have your other stats down here, your strength, stamina, agility, dexterity, wisdom, intelligence, charisma. Uh, those are pretty standard for uh, RPGs. You probably know what those are. You know, strength will affect how much you can hit. Stamina will affect how much health you have, agility, how much you can, uh, agility and dexterity, how much you can dodge and parry and things of that sort. Uh, wisdom, for different classes, some classes don't actually use wisdom for anything. Like a, a necromancer doesn't use wisdom for his power, uh, but he does use intelligence. A cleric doesn't use intelligence for his power, he does use wisdom. Uh, so those kind of switch back and forth depending on what class you're playing. Charisma uh, will affect the prices that you can sell things for and buy things for. So that's kind of nice. And then you have Poison, Magic, Disease, Fire, and Coal. These are your resist spells, or not resist spells, resist stats. Uh, so if somebody's going to use Poison on you, you have 15, that's your, your resist to Poison. You can always you know, wear armor that will up it so that you won't uh, have that spell take on you. And uh, believe it or not, this does come in handy quite a bit at higher levels. You get higher resist, and you will resist quite a bit very often. So uh, definitely something to put points into. Uh, on, on your armor anyways, if you can get it, uh, it does help out quite a bit. And then in very, very last you have weight. Uh, this is how much weight you can carry before you start to slow down. Your character moves at a certain speed. You'll see this is his run speed. And if you become uh, what they call over encumbered, uh, your guy will start walking slowly, uh, almost as a walk. And I'm trying to do a, a smaller walk, but I can't do it right here. So we'll just, uh, we'll find some weight put it on our guys. not very hard. You're going to be over encumbered most of the time as a cleric at the very beginning uh, because you don't have any armor that adds strength. Uh, you're not really looking for that kind of armor, but most cleric armor at later levels will not only add wisdom, but will also add strength because they know you need it. Uh, then you can also get weight reducing backpacks to help you out a little bit more there too. So let's go ahead and uh, actually get into uh, your equipment. Uh, this is your club right here. Now if you want to see what the stats are, uh, you hold down the alt button and left click on it and it will pop up this little thing right here now you can see right here at the top it says no trade uh, this means that you can't trade or sell this item to an NPC you can't trade it uh, or sell it to uh, another player you can't give it to them uh, it's it's a non-tradable item uh, it's on your character and that's it if you want to get rid of it you have to destroy it 
Uh, so they give you this item because they know that you can't make money off of it. And uh, it's a good weapon to have to start the game with. It's, it's not the greatest weapon, but it's pretty good. Uh, it tells you right here the slot, primary, secondary. That means either your main weapon or your shield. So you can wear it in either slot. Uh, so in case you're one of those people who can use uh, dual wielding like a warrior or something like that. Uh, then it tells you it's skill, it's one hand blunt. Uh, this really doesn't make that big of a difference uh, unless it's a skill that you haven't used before and you're a high level and you've been using say one handed slashing and you get a new weapon for one handed blunt and your skill level uh, in one handed blunt you know, is very very low you're going to miss quite a lot with the weapon, you're not going to hit the target you're going to have to build that skill up by using the weapon uh, before you become efficient in that weapon so you can keep an eye on that, maybe get a few weapons for different skills, switch them out every so often uh, if you're not sure you know what your end game item is going to be uh, what you know what skill that is you know most people will just ask you know what what's the cleric I think it's one handed blunt as well for your your sprinkler so they kinda give you what you need to start with uh, then you have attack delay and damage well damage is how much damage base damage your weapons going to do without any of your other stats involved you know without strength or anything uh, this is how much damage this weapon does. Delay, again, is the attack delay of this weapon without any of your other stats involved. If you have haste or any of those spells cast, uh, it's going to improve your attack delay, you know, shorten it down to a lower amount, but it's not going to show up on the weapon. So this is going to be an attack delay of 30. It's reasonable. I mean, you can get better weapons, obviously. Uh, and then weight, 5 pounds. So you can see that weighs quite a bit. Uh, size is medium. That usually will tell you what races can use it. If you're going to be like an ogre and a troll, uh, you're going to want large armor. You can't obviously wear small armor. It's going to be called the exact same thing. It's going to be like uh, banded armor, but then it's going to be called large instead of small. So keep that in mind if you're going to go the trade skill route or buy armor. You need to make sure you can wear it. And the, the definite way to make sure, other than the fact that it's small, medium, or large, is to look down here where it says class and race. It tells you right here that warriors, clerics, paladins, rangers, shadow knights, druids, monks, bards, rogues, and shamans can use this weapon. And as far as races go, all races can use this one. Sometimes it will tell you that only uh, high elves and, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, something like uh, ogres or trolls can use it. Uh, usually those combinations won't uh, be on the same list, but you get the point. Uh, it will tell you who can use it and who can't. And if you can't use it, uh, despite as much as you wish you could, you're not going to be able to equip that weapon. So it's pretty easy to equip. All you got to do is left click on it, and you can drag it over to where the little hand is and drop it on there, and he'll automatically equip it into the right spot if you're unsure of where it goes. Now later on, if you actually have equipment on, you won't be able to drag it onto him. You'll actually have to drag it onto the spot and switch the two weapons out. You also have food and water. You have these two right here, and I'll show you what they do. Open those up. Now you have to have food and water. If you ever run out, uh, your guy will stop regenerating and stop uh, creating uh, power, stop creating uh, his mana. Uh, and therefore you can't cast any spells and you can't regenerate your life. Uh, so it really makes your character worthless. I mean, you won't be able to participate in a group because you can't cast, and you can't. Uh, well, I mean, you can still get heals, uh, but it just you know you know you're not going to be productive. So you're going to need that food and water. Certain classes like clerics can summon that at a certain level, uh, so you don't really have to keep going out and buying it. Uh, but for most classes, you will need a backpack full of food and water uh, when you have the money to afford it. And you can see this; these are no trade, and it tells you this is refreshing drink. Uh, and it's tiny and small so there's different sizes mills and there's different uh, durations on the mills if you buy the higher uh, priced food usually they will last longer like I think these things last like 30 minutes uh, a piece so for the first like uh, three or four hours you're fine in the game then after that you're gonna have to actually start buying your own stuff uh, there's mills later on that last for like six hours a piece and things of that sort uh, so you have to buy food less often, and it will take up less space in your backpacks uh, to have more food. So let's go ahead and close those down. Now you also see that you have a, a few other things in here. Uh, some of these uh, little tattered notes. Uh, what are those? Well, one of them says spell. All you got to do is leave your mouse over it, and it gives you 
a little window that pops up and tells you a description spell courage and you got spell minor healing you also have a little tattered note now if you want to see what these do again you just hit the alt button left click on it and it will show you what they are now it tells you level needed cleric one and paladin nine you're probably wondering what that is well it's showing you what level a cleric can use this spell at it's also a different level for a paladin because paladins are half warrior half cleric uh, so it's only right that they get some of the same spells that clerics get just not as early because you're just a pure uh, healer so you should get the spell first and that's how they've kind of incorporated it into the game is that you know you're gonna get a lot of spells that paladins don't even get and you're gonna get a lot of spells first before the paladins even get them so at level one we can memorize this spell the skill is ab abjuration uh, mana cost is 12 that's pretty much all you need to know the weight and the size and the race none of that matters uh, as long as you can memorize it uh, you got minor healing again it tells you the level needed cleric one paladin nine but it also shows rangers get it at nine druids get it at one and shamans get it at one uh, and then it tells you the skill is alteration uh, mana cost is ten now if you come over here to the left hand side of the screen you'll see this little bar of little buttons and a little book it says open and closes your spell book so all you gotta do is click on that left click and it opens up this little spell book right here now if you want a memo all you need to do and I'll move it closer so you guys can see and you'll see my guy is now sitting down he has to be sitting down and not getting attacked when he's doing this uh, is just left click on it drag it over here to one of these little boxes it doesn't matter which one and left click on it and it says you begin to scribe courage and now it's mem now it's in your book you won't ever forget this uh, unless you deliberately try to uh, you know you can like right click on it and and say uh, delete from the spell book but you don't ever want to do that for any reason that I've ever found so uh, and then you got minor healing now just because you have it in your spell book doesn't mean you can cast it the way you want to cast it is to left click on it you'll get the little thing that pops up on your cursor and you'll drag it over here to one of these buttons now I tend to use uh, the top buttons for the ones I use the most and I'll save these bottom ones for like uh, gate or something along those lines and you'll see a little purple bar thing right here counting down that's you memorizing the spell to your button list it takes a few seconds so this is something that you can't just switch uh, or switch spells in and out very easy or very quickly uh, at later levels the the higher level spells will take even longer uh, so it's something you have to plan and do like in between fights if you're gonna do anything like that like buffing and you just because you only have so many buttons here and you're gonna have a lot more spells to pick from so what people will do is put all their their buffs on cast them on their entire group and then uh, demim all of them because you can just right click on it and it gets rid of it and then you can put it back again uh, so they are buff everybody up get rid of all of it and then put on the spells that you're gonna use on a daily basis to heal and and uh, cure resist or cure uh, noxious poisons and things of that sort uh, so you'll have like uh, a s extra thing you know it's not like uh, other video games where all your spells are there and you just have to pick them and use them whenever you feel like it uh, you don't really have that that uh, freedom in this one it's a little bit more difficult now you also have a tattered note if you right click on it this pops up right here it says greeting young cleric we are glad that you've decided to vote to devote yourself to our worthy cause. We have much work ahead of us. So take this note to Master Cleric Yolon Bronzeleaf as soon as you can. He will help you with your new training and teach you new skills. So let's go ahead and leave that up, but we can close our inventory down. And now you can actually run around. You can you're ready to move and look you know your surroundings. Now I would suggest taking some time uh, and just looking through the level uh, but if you want to get right into it you're going to need to find this guy right here as they suggest now you can do that by going out this little door uh, doors open by left clicking on them give them a couple of seconds and you're through it now each one of these buildings you can go into and there's people inside if you want to buy from an NPC in fact I'll zoom in if you want to buy from an NPC just walk up to them right click on them opens up their inventory and this is the stuff they have for sale you also see like right here it tells you the quantity how many of them they have well they only have one uh, then the little platinum silverish coin 
that tells you zero and then gold is one silver is five and copper is six so that's telling you the price right there it's one gold five silver and six copper uh, if you wanted to buy it you just hit the little button right here that says buy we don't have that much money uh, so it's grayed out for us right now taking you over to where this guy is. He's over in the uh, Claire Guild. Uh, but I wanted to show you this right here. It's the bank right here. You can go inside. You'll see this banker. You can right click on him. And you'll see that he has uh, little slots right here that you can buy. Or not buy. That you can use. You can put uh, items in. Like this one. Just toss it in there. And then later on when you come back it will still be here. You can put money in. You can put all sorts of things in here. Let's go ahead and hit done. And here you'll see right here, Yelarn Bronze Leaf. If you go ahead and close this down, open your inventory back up, and we'll move this over to the side. You can left click on the little tatter note, and then left click on him you'll see this window pop up and it has his name in it. Make sure that the name of the NPC is the name you're actually giving it to. You didn't click on somebody else by mistake. Uh, you want to make sure that when you give things to NPCs that you make sure they're not stacked. Like these foods right here or the, or the drink, they have five in the stack. Well, If you wanted to, you could control click on it and just take one off. When you give items to NPCs, make sure that they are not stacked. They're only one, 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 so on. If they want four bone chips, take up all four slots and then hit give and let's read down here he says uh, welcome friend to the clerics of Tunar I am Yilan Bronzeleaf head of the guild and default follower of Tunar here is your guild tunic it will help protect you against this world's evils and then it says your faction standing with the clerics of Tunar got better kings Tars Thex got better and anti mage got better Faction standing means that uh, for some of these races, some of these people, they have their own faction. They're more friendly to or they outright hate some people. Uh, if you're an evil class, uh, these guys will attack you on sight. Uh, so you want to be very careful with anything that gives you bad faction. If something gives you bad faction, uh, the, the best rule of thumbs is don't kill it. Just stay away from it. Uh, if it gives you good faction, it doesn't matter if you're a dark uh, or you know like a dark elf with evil faction killing something and getting good faction with good races that's not gonna hurt you um, that's that's very rare but if it, if you do find something like that go for all means kill it you know good faction does not hurt in any way in this game bad faction on the other hand can be very 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 bad so let's go ahead and look at your new tunic it's called the faded gold tunic or training tunic uh, it's a lore item lore means you can only have one of each so if you were to try to loot or get another one of these, you wouldn't be able to have it. You can only have one lore of this specific item on your character or in the bank at any one time. Uh, and that's they kind of threw that in there so that you didn't camp the same guy, the same name guy, and get the same loot. It kind of gave everybody a chance. If you've been in that group and you got the item, uh, you can't just keep rolling on it and getting more and more of the item. You can only have one before you go off and sell it. Uh, it's a slot for chest. AC, as I, as I was saying before, is your ability to resist getting hit is 2. Uh, your weight is pretty low. It's only 0.8. Medium. And the class is Cleric and race is High Elf. So it's made specifically for you. Uh, other races and other uh, classes will get different things from their guild hall. Uh, so what we're going to go ahead and do is put that on. And you'll see the slot that it goes in. Uh, you can see that there's kind of a grayed out... Uh, image of what the item that you can put in there that's kind of to help you out you know that these are pants uh, these are gloves uh, you know your boots or your bracers you can kind of see that your shoulder for your shawls so now that we got everything that we can possibly have what do we do well there's nothing to fight in this zone this is a safe zone that you can come back buy your spells at uh, and you'll find most of your spells from these guys over here uh, you scroll all the way down Actually, she doesn't have any. Maybe it's this one. There we go. So these are all spells, and again, you can just right-click on them in here. You don't even have to hold the Control button down or the Alt button uh, while you're inside the shops. It's only outside the shops that you have to do that. And it will tell you the level you need, level 19. Uh, you can do that, level 24. 
Uh, so you just have to find your low level ones. There's a few on here that we could get at this low level at level one, uh, but we don't have any money. We need to we need to go out and make some, you know, kill some creatures, uh, loot those bodies, come back and sell. So I'm gonna go ahead and take you outside of the town for your first experience in killing. Now leveling in this game is a lot slower than in most games. This is gonna take you quite a long time. Uh, and it's there for you to enjoy. I wouldn't suggest trying to power through it. There's so many things to go do at such a low level. If you ever get tired of one zone, you know, you've been there for a while and you just don't want to hunt there anymore. Uh, there's, you know, 25, 30 other zones. Let's see, this is another player right here. Uh, there's so many other zones that you can travel. Just, uh, you know, get on the boat and and go. I mean, it's not like uh, in other games you can click on something and just, phew, you're there. In this one, you have to run it. Uh, so that can be a journey in itself, you know, just going through these other zones to get to these these uh, places you want to go to uh, is very, very cool. Uh, it really kind of immerses you into the atmosphere rather than other games where you're just kind of popping through. Now we are finally outside. Once you pass these arches, uh, everything will be ready to attack, or not ready to attack, but they are attackable. I just got stuck on the wall. There we go. Now, if you ever need help, you can run over to these guys, and they should help you out. Now, when I say con, I'm talking about what they uh, consider you. And you can do this two ways. You can either right-click on them, and it will show you down here uh, what these guys con to you. Or you can hit the C button on your, your keyboard, and it will do the exact same thing. Now, it says it in red, which means they're dramatically higher level than I am. Uh, and it says it judged you amiably which means they won't attack you. In fact, they will help you if you get into trouble. And this says, would, uh, what would you like your tombstone to say? That's going to say that on any red creature because they so dramatically outlevel you that there's it's not a, a chance that you're going to die. It's a sure thing you're going to die if you attack that. Whereas if you click on this little bee up here, and we'll target it, as you can see right here in the little window, uh, you can right-click on it, and it will say uh, in white, a giant wasp drone regards you indifferent, which means it won't attack you straight off, uh, but it is attackable, and it looks like an even fight. So if you want to attack it right now, uh, there's a 50-50 chance that you will win or that you will die. Uh, so let's go ahead and go up there. Now when you first start off, you got to remember that uh, your skill and your weapon uh, pretty much sucks. It's at zero. You'll see that your offense is going to slowly get better as you take hits or as you deal off hits. Uh, or defense will get better as you take hits. Offense as you deal them. Uh, your weapon skill will go up as you fight. And you'll see just for right now, uh, you're really, really not doing very much damage. A lot of the time you're missing, uh, but the B is hitting you still. Now this is something that uh, almost every uh, mob does in this game when they get real low on life. Uh, they try to run away. And he stopped because his health was actually regenerating uh, while he was running away. Now that he's dead, you can click on him, right click, and it pops up the little loot thing. He actually didn't have any loot on him uh, to loot, but he did have some coin. You receive 16 copper from the corpse. So even if there's nothing to sell, uh, you can still make money by, by checking the corpse. Uh, so if your backpacks are completely full and you just don't have any room anymore, uh, you know, you can still loot and make a little bit of cash. Now, here's a Trixie. It's yellow. I tend to stay away from these uh, because they do give you bad faction for killing them. Some, some of the guys out here uh, are good, I don't know, good mobs. You know, they're good for the, the people of the zone. Uh, so we're going to take on this guy, the Orc Pond. Scouts hits you ready to attack. And as you see, just getting near him, he goes ahead and hits me anyways. Now this guy might be a little tough fight, as you can see I'm getting clobbered right here, my health's going down quite a bit. And anytime you hear that big crushing noise like that right there, that's a critical hit. He just got another critical hit. So I don't think we're going to be able to take this guy on, so I'm going to show you guys what to do to, uh, to save yourself if this ever happens. Now these guys will follow you to the ends of the earth, there is no max limit on how far you have to run before these guys uh, lose interest in you. If you're on one side of the zone, and these zones are huge, uh, and you manage to uh, to run away from him, he will follow you all the way to that, that side of the zone. He will just keep coming. And every mob that he sees along the way, uh, he'll pull with him. So you can just imagine, and they call that trains in this game. 
because uh, it's like uh, they just keep picking up more passengers basically on the way and uh, you can just imagine you know 30 40 50 mobs uh, of extremely high level coming at you there's no way you're gonna beat that even in a group uh, so the only thing you can do to erase that hate that that aggro uh, is to zone uh, it kind of makes a unique play style experience because in other games you can just run through the zone and to get where you're going and you know the creatures kind of go back to where they were at uh, after you get to a certain distance so you're safe but in this game that's not the case you actually have to be very careful when traveling through a zone unless you have uh, like a sew or something then you can you know make this huge train behind you zone it and you're fine but the other thing to keep in mind is that these creatures who are following you, if somebody was, say, to run past you in the opposite direction, those creatures uh, would then attack them as well, and chances are they would die. So you're not just affecting yourself, you're affecting other people. So these are some of the safety things you need to keep in mind, because uh, people will be very ticked off if, if you cause them to die because you're being too lazy and just running through mobs. Now you went ahead and got some royal jelly. This is trash stuff that you can sell. Almost everything you get off of these guys is going to be trash. Uh, in fact, I'll leave my my inventory up because you'll see over here on the left it says next level and has a little yellow bar with a, a blue line going through it. That's your experience bar. Uh, so I want you guys to see just how much experience you're getting per kill at this level. Now, it's going to slow down dramatically at higher levels. So just because say five or ten kills get you a level uh, at level one you know at level 50 you may have to do you know 300 or 400 kills uh, to get another level and each one of those kills may take you five to twenty minutes depending on if you're in a group or soloing or what's going on there uh, so you can see that it may take you like a week to get past one level it's crazy and I'm not even really hitting this guy but it sure is hitting me here we go Offense went up to two, thankfully. This guy's almost dead. And you can see their health regenerates just like yours does. You can see I got uh, like a half a bubble on that one. Now you want to be careful with some of these creatures. Uh, even though they're not aggro, they're ready to attack, as I said before, uh, straight off the bat. If I'm attacking a wasp, and another wasp happens to, uh, you know, fly by, uh, he will join his friend in attacking me. Uh, these are, again, just uh, trash stuff that you can sell to the NPC. So, the bats uh, are not that way. So, if you were to ta take on, you know, a bat and four others fly by, you don't have to worry about them adding on to you. Uh, but these wasps are a little different in that regard. They, they see their friend in trouble, and they're like, oh, hey, you're going to attack him, I'm going to attack you too. It's kind of a unique little thing that you kind of have to learn each of the mobs, uh, you know, traits and quirks when you get into a new zone. Uh, it adds that that kind of realism. I mean, some animals are like that. Uh, I know bees are like that. If you attack one, kind of stirs up the whole nest and they all come in for you. Uh, bats, I don't ever think uh, act like that in real life. So You can see it's kind of hard to hit them because you have to stay right on top of them. You can always zoom in depending on which play style you like. You can see this takes up quite a bit of your screen. And it doesn't allow you to see if anybody's sneaking up on you. And you see we might have got him if we went up just a little bit more. In fact, I'll show you what that looks like. I'll run it up over here. And you'll see now he's attacking. Whereas I could have just ran up to this guy without this guy in tow. Uh, and he wouldn't have done anything to me. What's the benefits of doing two at a time? Really none. Because you're taking twice the hits, but you're not dealing out twice the damage. So it's just uh, kind of a, a penalty for being uh, lazy, for not being cautious. And I might die here in a second. I want to get this last kill, and then I'll run him. Now, when your health goes down so low, your guy is going to walk a lot slower. So running to an NPC for help... Uh, really is out of the question for that. You're not going to be able to do that. And you can see they're just uh, so high level that they kill it in one hit. And you won't get any loot off of it. You also won't get any experience for their kill. 
uh, the the way you can know for sure if you're going to get experience is if you've done 50% or more of the damage and you've gotten the last hit. So if you did, say, 52% of the creature's health and you're like, oh, I have to run it, I have to run it, and you run over here to the guards, if the guards don't kill them in one hit, if, if they're closer to the guards level and it takes them a few hits to kill them, and you can get that last hit in before the guard does, you know, all the damage uh, that's left, uh, you'll still get the experience for it and you'll still be able to loot it. Obviously, that's that's pretty kind of hard on the timing to uh, to be able to time that, so it doesn't always work that well. Uh, so it's not something you can really use to your advantage that often. But you know, if you're going to run into the guard, you might as well try to get that last hit. Uh, and who knows? You know, it may just be extra experience that you uh, can get with that safety net. Now, there's not too many guards in some of these later level zones. Obviously, this is a newbie kind of zone. It's kind of a low level place, uh, so there's guards that you can run to, but at higher levels, uh, you're just going to be on your own. You're going to be in dungeons, you're going to be in dangerous zones, uh, and there's no guards to run to. Uh, so it's not something you can really take full advantage of uh, too often. But when they're there, you know, use them. That's what they're there for. Nobody really gives you uh, too much too much shame, you know, for using them. You know, they're, they're a tool to be used. And uh, if you do, like, a really bad pull, which is, uh, you know, if you're in a group, can I not attack him? There we go. If you're in a group, usually you'll have some one guy go off and pull the creatures back to the group. Uh, and if you manage to get too many that you know your group's not going to be able to handle, uh, instead of taking them back to the group, you can take them over to uh, one of the guards, kill all of them real quick, and run back. Now, obviously, you're going to lose out on all that experience, so it's not ideal, but it's better than people dying. Because in this game, when you die... Uh, anything that's on your corpse or anything on your body uh, will f will stay on your corpse and it's going to be right where you died so you have to run all the way back from wherever you are bound uh, and that could be you know 10, 15, 20 zones away if you didn't bind someplace close and then loot your corpse uh, that also means that if you're in a dangerous spot uh, that you worked your way down with, with a group uh, that you're going to have to kill all those creatures again to get back down there and you're going to have to do it with nothing on you know, you're going to be butt naked, no equipment, no no inventory, no nothing. Uh, so sometimes people will keep stuff in the bank for emergency situations like that where they know they have to fight their way back down. Uh, you know, kind of a halfway decent weapon, halfway decent armor, just in case they ever have to do that. For Necros, they tend to keep bone chips in the bank because that's what they need to cast their pets. Uh, so if you do have a pet of some sort, you know, keep that in there. Uh, whatever the reagent is that you need to cast it just in case. For the rest of us, like a cleric, uh, you know, your equipment really doesn't matter too much. It also it adds more power, but other than that, you're not really going to be taking the hits if you're in a group, so it's really the tank who really needs to worry about having that second set of armor so that he can take the hits on the way back down if the whole group wiped. And we're about to get another level here. This should level us up. Now, unlike in other games where when you level, if you have any new spells, they just automatically give them to you. This one, it doesn't even let you know if you get new spells or anything like that. You have to find that out by going back to the guild hall and looking at see what your next level spells are at. I believe they're at level 5 or 6 or something on this guy. I'll have to look again. Uh, but you don't get them every level. You get them every so often. Uh, so it's something you definitely look forward to your next level spells, you know, it's, it's you're drooling over that next kill spell because it just does so much. Now you see, I just killed this guy, and this guy is not aggro to me, he's not attacking, he doesn't care that I'm here. And you can see my health went up to 42, and my power went up to 56. Pretty much everything else stayed the same when you level. Uh, the only other difference is a level 1 creature, like if we con this guy, you'll now see that they are blue instead of even or white. Uh, the white means that they are exactly the same level as you. Blue text means that they are slightly less than you. They're either one level or two levels below what you're at. Uh, and then there's the light colored text blue, which means they're three and under. Uh, and then if they're so low that uh, they, they won't give you any experience, they're gonna be grayed out. And usually those, even if they are ready to attack, 
uh, for the most part, won't attack you unless you're just right there on the line, right there on the, the edge of, uh, you know, being acceptable. Because if you're like 15 levels or 20 levels higher than them, you could just run right through them. And they're, they're not going to do anything to you because they realize they don't have a chance of killing you. Uh, but you can just, you know, look at them basically and they die. Now, this is kind of useful for a cleric because, say, at level 50, if I'm running through a camp that's level 25, uh, those guys would actually still wipe the floor with you because, you know, clerics just don't take damage or do damage very well. So it's kind of nice for them, but for most people, you know, they just power right through it and it wouldn't be an issue. They just kill it in a couple hits. So you still get that little benefit of being able to run through higher level or lower level places without being attacked. Uh, it's definitely nice, especially if you're doing like a corpse retrieval when you have nothing on your body uh, and then these like low level things just keep attacking you, that would suck, so. So let's go back over to the entrance. And I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to make some extra buttons, uh, you know, what hotkeys you might want to make. Uh, you know, it's kind of over overwhelming at first, you know, all the stuff that I'm teaching you, but these are things that you can slowly go into. You don't have to master any of these techniques, any of these things right off the bat. Uh, they're just things that you may like to know that I felt that I could share with you guys. So another thing you could do is come up here to your little EQ button and go to, where is it? Uh, is it actions? Yeah, there you go. So you have hotkeys. Uh, you already have the first one. You can set a second one, which goes, where is it? Who's moving it around? I don't see it. Uh, before we do that, I'm going to go into uh, options and change my uh, UI right here. Uh, I think I like it. This one is the right one. Give it a second. It's going to load it up. It's going to change the look of the screen. Uh, you can find the UIs in a lot of different places online. Uh, there we go. This is the UI I like the best. So I got the third hot bar. Uh, and the second one. Don't know why the default is up there in the corner. But once you have it set up, again, you don't have to really worry about it too often. And you can move these around, put them wherever you are more comfortable with them being. Uh, I just tend to favor certain places that I've always had them, uh, because that's where I'm used to it. So let's go ahead and get those guys going. Now this is your main chat. Pretty much everything goes into your main chat. If you do uh, uh, any talking in your group or in Say, or if anybody's doing out of character, it all goes here. Attacking people all goes here. Uh, so that's kind of confusing. What we want to do is create a new chat window. Uh, actually, several of them, depending on uh, you know what you like. I try to go with three uh, or four. Uh, helps me out. So I'll move this up and do one more. And you're like, why do you need that many chat windows? Well. Let me scroll these over a little bit more. Well, if I'm in a group, uh, I have group messages going on, and I also have tells coming in uh, from, you know, your friends and things of that sort. Uh, if you have a lot of fighting going on, every time I hit somebody, every time I do anything, that scrolls up through the list. And so if somebody sends me a tell, uh, I, I may not even see it. It may go through my, my chat window so quickly that I didn't even notice it was there, and I missed the tell. Same thing with group chat. Uh, things are going on so much, casting spells, things of that sort, that, that things will scroll through so quickly. You may miss that the fact that they're telling you there's another ad or uh, stop pooling or whatever the case may be. So you want to create a chat window. And what we can do is come over here and do rename window and call it, uh, let's say, tells. And say OK. Actually, I want to capitalize that. Uh, just because I'm anal on that one. <laughs> cool, it tells. Uh, and then you want to go in here to filters and set what will go to this window. Whatever you click on, that's only going to go to this window. So tells is all I'm going to have go to this window. Tells, for those of you who aren't familiar with that, 
or private messages being sent directly to you and nobody else. Nobody can see them, nobody knows that they're going on, uh, just you. And you can do that by doing, say, forward slash uh, T E, I oh, don't that's why, T E L L space, and then the name of the player you want to send the message to. Uh, in my case, it would be Demiro. You just do that, spell the name out, and then space, and then you type whatever you want. You can just say hi. Now, I can't talk to myself talking to yourself again which is exactly what I'm doing right now in real life but they don't let you do it in the game so uh, we'll do that and then you can do this one as well rename window uh, group and hit OK now on the filter for the group I tend to do uh, pretty much all the stuff I want to keep an eye on like group I also want to have the the say go into here also I will do uh, raid for the higher level ones uh, You'll do raid. Uh, I'll do OOC, which is out of character. Uh, I'll also do uh, auctions, shouts, uh, emotes, and you can see a little, little, uh, little tag going next to each one of them that is, that is in here. I'll also do guild and system messages. But you can see the main chat window, which is where you talk. Uh, I'm actually going to change that to be the main chat window over here. Always chat here. That that will change this as the main chat window. So now when I type anything, it all ends up over here. Instead of over here. Now this one could be your miscellaneous window uh, that I like to have uh, for weird filters. Like if I'm trying to keep an eye on uh, my skills. I can have all my skills go over here. If I want to have uh, my experience messages to make sure that I'm getting experience, I can have them all go over here. My pet responses, things of that sort. You can pretty much set this as your your little extra uh, window for the th the weird things that you're you're trying to keep an eye on. And then you have your main chat window, which is where all your attacks and things go on over here. Now, as far as hot buttons, well, a hot button is anything that you don't start with. Uh, over here you start with uh, like find, camp, which is how you exit the game, sit and walk. Uh, in fact I put on walk and this is how slow you will be running when your life is real low or when you're overweight. This is the the speed at which you will be moving. And as you can see it will take you a long 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 time to get to anywhere that you really want to get. You always want to keep on running anyways but... So the way you can make hot buttons uh, is coming over here to uh, this little tab right here, the socials page. And you'll see there's already a few here, some of the more ones that people use the most often. Uh, AFK, away from keyboard, uh, you can use that uh, when you're going away, uh, you know, to the bathroom or grab a sandwich or let your group know that you're AFK. Anon, uh, Anon will change, you are now anonymous. So if I did forward slash, uh, you'll see Demiro down here on the bottom and it will say that I am anonymous. It doesn't tell you. Uh, what race I am or what level I am. Whereas if I turn that off and I do that again, you will now be able to see that I'm a level 2 cleric uh, high elf. If you want to go anon, that's up to you. Groups will have a harder time finding you because they won't know what level or what race you are. So that's up to you. I don't like doing that though. Uh, split. I tend to stay away from split. What this will do is when you loot a corpse, if it has any gold or silver or anything, any, any money on it whatsoever, it will take that money and automatically split it evenly between everybody in the group. Now you're probably wondering why wouldn't you want that on. Well, copper weighs quite a bit, whereas gold and silver doesn't weigh quite as much. So most people will just be like, you keep the gold and silver uh, for yourself on that loot, and I'll loot occasionally, and I'll get the gold and silver, and that way you're not taking like one silver and splitting it up to, you know, three uh, copper for each one of us. And then we're all going to have... 600 copper before the end of the group and none of us will be able to walk you know it's better to have say uh, 30 silver than to have or 40 silver 50 silver than to have 500 copper so that's why I tend not to do split a uh, bug is if you find a bug in the game you can go ahead and report it uh, consider which is just the C button you can make a button for it if you don't like doing that uh, duel is to duel other players you don't get anything from doing it but it's there uh, feedback again is to to let them know. Hail is uh, how you can actually start some quest. If you walk up to an NPC 
Uh, they don't have any feathers above their head. They don't have any glowing uh, thing to let you know that they have a quest. The only way you can find out if they have a quest is to walk up to them and say hail. And then look at their chat. It will tell you. Sometimes they'll be like, hey, we'll see that you're interested in this. And it will have a couple words in the paragraph uh, in parentheses. Then you have to type those words in a sentence. So if it says uh, elephant, you're going to say what elephant? And if you did the right combination of, of asking the question the right way, because sometimes you're saying what is elephant or where is the elephant uh, instead of saying what elephant, uh, you have to get that right as well. And then he'll respond to you. So you have to read the paragraph, understand the paragraph, and then use the keyword uh, the right way. It's the old school type way of doing like a D&D kind of thing. It's not the new one where you just kind of power right through the quest, not even reading the text, you're just clicking through it, boom, I got the quest, you run off and go get it. It tells you exactly where to go. Uh, this one will tell you that you need to get uh, fire bead wise. Nothing else. doesn't tell you what zone to go to, uh, what area of the zone. Sometimes the zone's like 50 zones away, uh, and you got to go really, really far, and you find out that, oh, you got the quest, but it's actually like a level 75 quest uh, to be able to complete it. There's like no level range on it. It doesn't tell you how hard it's going to be, how long it's going to be. It just gives you the quest. Uh, despite the name EverQuest, you're going to do very, very few quests in this game. Not very many. Uh, let's see. You can do played. It will tell you how long you've played the game. Uh, since we just started this character, not very long. Uh, you also have the time. It will tell you the real time of the game, as well as the real time in the real world. Uh, GM list, uh, wave is a little emotion that you can do to other people. You can also do quite a few other ones uh, like dance, cheer, bow, buy, things of that sort. But you'll see the next couple pages are empty. So if you want to create one, just right click on it, pops up. You can change the color of the text, things of that sort. But the very first one you're going to want to do is one called Corpse, C-O-R-P-S-E. And then down here is the actual command that you're going to use. And that's just forward slash C O R. PSE, there we go. And then hit accept. And there it is right there. Now if you left click, hold it down, it gives you a little button, and you can bring bring it over here to your hotbar, which is where you want it. Now, like I said before, when you die in this game, uh, all your stuff will stay on your body. And then you have to go back and find your body. Well, when you find your body, it may not be safe to loot it right there. You may want to get a res on it, which is a spell that the casters or the clerics can cast um, to read regenerate your body back to to the full health that it used to be at and give you a portion of that experience that you lost when you died back the higher level the res the more experience you get I believe all the way up to like 96 percent uh, but at lower levels I think it starts at like 26 or 36 percent experience gain back uh, so not a full uh, you know restoration on your experience but pretty close at higher levels now if you want to drag it someplace so that a cleric who just came into the zone looking for a group doesn't have to go halfway through the zone to res you. Uh, he can just do it while he's sitting there, and you may not even have to pay him anything, although it's kind of nice to tip him even if they don't want it. Uh, you can drag it, and that's what corpse is. You click on your corpse, click this little button, and you'll drag it through the zone as you click it. Uh, another good thing to have, LOC. We'll go ahead and make a button for that. Forward slash LOC. Uh, that's short for location. You go ahead and drag it over here. Now if I click this now, it tells me my location, basically GPS coordinates. So if you're in a new zone and you're about to die, that's why it's good to have a hot button because you never know when you're getting into a fight that's over your head. You're about to die, you're running through the zone, you're off the path, you have no idea where you're at. You click this and then when you die, now you know where your corpse is. Write that number down. When you come back to the zone, you can go through the zone using your LOC and you'll see the numbers change as I move through it. If my elevation changes, as my direction changes, the numbers change in uh, in unison with that. So you can literally find your corpse again using your LOC because you have to find that corpse, get your armor off of it. Uh, so that's a very, very useful thing to have right there. Uh, if you're going to be in groups uh, and you're going to be a pooler, one of the things you're going to want is incoming. So you can do short incoming. Do forward slash G for group. That means anything you say next will be in your group say. Do uh, incoming and percent T and then accept. Now for our purposes I'm gonna go in there and change that 
to uh, say so that I can show you guys exactly what that's going to look like when I do it real quick. Right backspace. And then do accept. So, if I were to come up here and click it, that didn't quite work. Yeah, it's not going to let me do it because I'm not in a group, but regardless, the percent %t will say whatever you're targeting. So it will say incoming, and then because I'm selecting a bat, it will say a bat, or a wolf, or whatever the name of the creature is, so that you will let your team know that you're bringing back with you uh, a specific mob, uh, and if you're bringing back more of that same mob, you can click it three or four times and let them know that you're bringing three or four of those guys back with you. Every time you click it, that's another ad that you're bringing back. So they know that, oh crap, you know, he's bringing back a seven guys, we're all dead. Uh, or no, he's bringing back three guys, we need to be on the ball so we can kill these guys really quickly. Uh, let's hop up and, and be ready for that. You can also use uh, a main thing that all classes are going to need is train. And you're going to want to do four slash shout, which will appear it in red. And do something uh, train heading to zone or choo 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 you know something funny if you want to do that uh, but shout will actually appear throughout the entire zone in giant red text and the reason you want to only use those for emergencies is because you know it's kind of annoying to see the giant red text so most people will get angry if you use it too often but a train a message is really really important to have because if you're going through a zone, and you're not doing it on purpose, but you're going through the zone, you're trying to find your group, or trying to find your corpse, and you get attacked, and you're like, oh, I have to run it, I have to zone it, I don't have any other choice other than to die. So you're heading back to the zone, and a couple other things jump on you. As I said before, if you if you get to the zone, new zone, anybody who's sitting in that, that zone will get the aggro from those guys. So 50, 60 guys following you, now are going to attack those people standing there, and everybody's going to have to zone and wait it out, wait for those guys to pay back before they can zone in. And if they're doing something, uh, you know, miming a spell or going through their inventory, they're not ready for it. And, you know, 50, 60 guys will kill you in half a second because they all get one hit and poof, you're dead. Uh, so giving them that heads up means they can zone before you get there and they don't have to worry about dying. So that's what you use that button for. You click it, shouts out, lets the whole zone that there's a... Uh, a train coming, get out of the way, do whatever you got to do, but just don't be there. Uh, very, very useful thing to have. Uh, there's a few other buttons and things that you can get uh, later on, but I'm not going to go ahead and go into those just yet. My, my second video, I'll go a little bit more detailed into that. I don't want to overwhelm you guys too much. Again, these are not things uh, you're going to be using on a daily basis. These are little things that you can have to help your, your game play out later on that you may not be familiar with. So, again, guys, if you like these short little videos, uh, I would greatly appreciate you guys hitting the like button, subscribing, leaving any comments below, or as always, you're welcome to hit me up in game. And I want to thank you guys for watching.